Alright, buenos dias mis amigos. Alright, today I'm going to talk about 2 Peter chapter 3. And to start off with, I'm going to uh, share this video. And um, apparently he's going to, this gentleman is going to answer the question, Will the current heavens and earth be destroyed in order to make way for the new heavens and earth? 2 Peter 3, uh, verses 3 through 13, is certainly a text that Christians have uh, traditionally gone to uh, on this question. And at first glance, uh, you know, Peter is using a very uh, a vivid string of terms to, to speak about the, uh, the day of the Lord, uh, the comings of the new heavens and new earth. And it's been very typical for Christians to, uh, to go to a text like this, especially from the King James uh, reading of, 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 say, verse 10. This world will burn up, will be consumed in fire, uh, will be destroyed. Um, sound biblical exegesis, however, uh, in the last number of years has pointed out, and I think convincingly, that the, the language that Paul, excuse me, that Peter actually uses here is not destruction language, but is purgation language. Um, best manuscripts, instead of using a uh, or consumed with fire, um, uh, instead of using a term that comes from uh, a, a verb meaning to consume, actually comes from a verb meaning to to establish or to find. Actually, uh, uh, instead of to consume, means to establish. So God's not going to consume this world. He's going to establish this world. That doesn't make any sense. And this guy here, he's a doctor, doctor, Michael D. Williams, Covenant Theology Seminary. Now, this is what I go on about almost every day, is that these guys they're not scholars they're not experts they're philosophers okay and you know the Bible talks about philosophy right and Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ so it's interesting to me this guy says in recent um, history or whatever that um, people have decided that what that that fire doesn't mean to consume but to establish well you know there's a reserves into fire against the day so this guy wants to use words like purgation and exegesis and uh, it's these, these big words that for me I'm dumb I really am, because I gotta think. What a, what does that word mean? Purgation? There's isn't there a movie called uh, Purge? Is that the same thing, or or is it like purgatory? I, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. I don't use that word very often. And this stuff here is simple. This stuff here makes my head spin. Glance. Uh, you know, Peter is using a very... But, but, what I want you to know is that you are the expert. You are the scholar. You have everything that you could ever possibly ask for right there in the Bible that you hold in your hands the key to understanding is faith it's not going to school it's not getting a degree 
it's not having a doctor in front of your name or a title of any sort it's believing in the Bible that you hold in your hands that'll give you more knowledge wisdom understanding than all the experts in the world all right now let's continue with this or consumed with fire um, instead of using a term that comes from uh, a verb meaning to consume actually comes from a verb meaning to to establish or to find uh, what? Uh, and, and it does carry the idea of purgation since when does fire wow. um, and in, interestingly and importantly we, we, we miss the context of, of you know that reminds me <laughs> that I mean this is doggone it man you know rather than just making it real simple and easy for dummies like me this guy talks in circles and talks in confusion and I don't if you can understand it you're smarter than I am I'll tell you that right now all right in Genesis 3 chapter I'm sorry in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 it says now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made and he said unto the woman yea as God said question mark getting Eve to doubt the Word of God isn't that interesting because in 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 it says but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ and to me this is taking something simple and confusing it making it more, seem like it's more complicated than what it is and so the advantage of doing this is that now uh, the, those that follow him they're gonna say oh I don't know what the Bible says I'm now I'm gonna have to depend on him to tell me what God says because I don't know well I'm, I'm trying to figure out what this guy is trying to say you know I just don't know anymore I used to know but now I don't know because fire means to establish and to find it's like you're redefining the Bible man you're, you're, re, you're redefining the English language when you make claims like that it's unbelievable man but this guy scholarly seminary school covenant theology doctor and he's telling us that fire doesn't mean to consume but to establish and to find I mean this is ridiculous I don't even know the English language anymore after listening to this guy what's going on here um, yeah, what if you skip to verse on? 10 you get this this uh, again this very vivid picture but before that uh, Peter talks oh, about wait, uh, wait a second I thought we were the Noahic. skipping if you go here and then quickly up to there and over to here and then we're, what the hell are you talking about the Noahic deluge what we really have here is the new age is that the Noah Noah the flood of Noah okay that's what he saw uh, the Noahic the Noahic deluge nope. what we really have Noahic? here is Noahic? The, this world will be destroyed as Noah's world was destroyed there you go so, the, this world will be destroyed as Noah's world was destroyed. there you go now you got it destroyed so we really have the picture of three worlds here uh, Noah's world before yeah, the flood, that's right. the world that came after the there flood, you go. Now and the world it. that will come uh, after you, the return of now, the Lord. Now you got uh, it. And these three worlds are um, distinguished by two catastrophic events. There you go. Uh, the flood and the destruction. See, by, simple. I understand. Simple. By fire. Uh, but God's only created his world once and it's still here so the new egg flood did not destroy the world the new egg flood it purged it 
It cleansed it. Wait, what? It didn't destroy it. So the Noahic Flood did not destroy the world. <clears throat> oh, let's see here. Did not destroy the world. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Hey, you're playing word games, man. It didn't destroy it. It exegetically, uh, per purgatorially, denially, skilly good. I had no idea what this guy is saying. I really don't. But. <laughs> he didn't destroy the world. It purged it. He purged it. Oh my goodness! What? The, what does that even mean? He he uh, ran it through a strainer. <laughs> Just don't. Why is this so complicated? Why is this so hard to understand? Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Let's overanalyze that to the point that we have no idea what it means. Really? So, okay, that's enough. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to this guy here. Um, just because. We'll see. Now, I want to I wanna share with you why this is so important. And this... You know, this is half the reason why people are so confused. Now, when you understand Second Peter 3, you should understand that this is consistent with what Jesus says in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, when he's asked about the end of the world. All right, and then real quickly, let me go to Matthew 24. He's asked, what is the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And the end of the world is when he comes in the clouds of heaven, and the angels of, of God gather together the, the elect. We're lifted up in the air, and our enemy is gathered at our feet. Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye... When ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. This is in reference to the end of the world. Alright, and so, obviously, we are very near the end of the world. There's a couple of things here I want you to take note of. Um, <clears throat> well, first of all, uh, you know, there's a very interesting verse here. Let's see if I can... Find it real quickly. I forget where it's at. Oh, it's right there. It's right there. I wasn't sure. Okay, so in this gospel, the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end come. All right. All right. So uh, that's happening right now. We know that. All right. So there's no need to. I worry about well what happens next what happens next is you know do I have to tune in to Dan Rather and Peter Jennings to find out what's the next Bible prophecy to be, to be fulfilled before the end of the world comes well look <laughs> if, the, if Jesus comes today it's the end of the world and whatever you thought was gonna happen next it, it ain't happening alright you just missed it All right. Now, I don't want you to miss it. All right, I want you to be ready because it could be today. It could be a long time from now, seemingly. But it'll be sooner than people realize. All right. Now, um, if you go here, you notice something interesting. Except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. In other words, if God let things play out, there would come a time when there would be nobody on earth saved. Now think about that. Now that's not 
going to be it's because uh, you know politicians lock up and kill all people that say they believe in Jesus right whatever fantasy world that some people want to present that's never going to happen all right it, the reason why there is uh, why we are leading to that point where there's nobody going to be saved is because of all the deception in the world and Jesus has asked what is the sign of the of the, thy coming and of the end of the world first thing he says is take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many we read about this over and over all throughout the Bible evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived it's because of the deception it's because of people saying that they are Christians and shall deceive many prophets false prophets shall rise and deceive many even the elect will be deceived all right and so this is the world that we're in where it, the Bible is so simple but everybody wants to confuse it and we see example after example after example of this happening day after day after day after day it's incredible all right now think about um, this idea that well it's not gonna be destroyed it's gonna be purged well let me give you an example all right let me show you an example all right imagine this is the old world you know either way either before the flood or uh, right now okay maybe we ought to just say well, this is right now okay and so God the wrath of God comes and he pours out his wrath upon the whole world and destroys it <laughs> this is not purging alright if you want to use this as an analogy or an example or whatever this is not purging I don't even really know what purging means anymore but you'll notice here it is completely that that old world if you want to call it this world totally destroyed this thing's gonna picked gonna be picked apart clean same with this world that we're living in now all right and then there's gonna come a new heaven and a new earth all right wherein dwelleth righteousness this to me is a pretty good visual because this old world is going to be totally destroyed now there's something in the Bible uh, that says that every mountain shall be leveled and every uh, what's that every valley here let me just uh, it's in my head and I can't think of it alright valley oh I can't, I'm not going to be able to find it I'm not going to be able to find it. I don't remember. I don't remember. I just don't remember. Doesn't matter. Ah, there it is. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth. All right. So that's. <clears throat> I think that's a. Uh, uh, I think it's echoed from the Old Testament but it doesn't matter who cares you get the point alright now so we see this old world is totally destroyed alright same thing is going to happen to our world totally flattened and then out of heaven comes the new Jerusalem the holy city of God and it will be set down on the earth and uh, there will be no need of the sun right 
and there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering, no more death. Right, this is pretty simple because we see examples of this all throughout our life and all throughout the Bible. All right, we have easy, simple examples that demonstrate the world that we live in and the world to come. And okay, so this is important in my opinion because we are not putting our hope into uh, this idea that there's going to come, you know, a thousand years of peace. No, 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 no. No, we're putting our hope into eternal life. We do not put our hope into this idea of a period of time where we are in our glorified bodies reigning and ruling over people that are not in their glorified bodies all right that's not in the bible anywhere at all and it's that idea is full of lust and wickedness it's disgusting but we see lots of preachers preaching this idea and i just don't think that they put any thought into what they teach what do you put your hope into now uh, that the Babinos he had a great um, uh, we had a great conversation he said well this is not a salvation issue oh it's not well I don't know I just don't know but think about this if you're putting your hope into a thousand years is that really the same thing I mean, how can you rightly say if you're, you're saved? You're saved from what? You're saved for an additional thousand years? That's not right. Okay, and so, are you putting your hope into this idea that you're going to be in your glorified body living among people that are not in their glorified bodies? Is that, re that, is that really the same thing? You know, are you putting your hope into uh, growing antennas on top of your head? Let's say that you're, you believe that if, when you're saved, you're going to be saved and you're going to be given your own planet and you're going to be able to have sex with all the virgins of that planet. Are you really saved? I mean, if you're putting your hope into uh, transforming into a frog and uh, you know whatever uh, is that really the same so you say it, it's not a salvation issue well maybe I, I don't know because what are you putting your hope into uh, if you're not putting your hope into everlasting life what are you well I don't we don't have the same salvation period. If you're not putting your hope into the end of this world and the beginning of a new world, we don't have the same salvation. So it is a salvation issue. If you believe you're going to evolve into a little green man, and I believe that this world is going to be totally destroyed, and I'm going to be transformed into an, an incorruptible body, this we don't have the same salvation so I think it is a salvation issue and to say it doesn't matter what you believe I, I don't believe that <laughs> I think it absolutely does matter I, otherwise if it didn't matter then there's a whole bunch of stuff in the Bible that it was written in vain and I don't believe that at all Now in 1st John chapter 2 if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him right love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world 
The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Alright, so this world's coming to an end absolutely coming to an end that's what we're putting our hope into because this world is full of wickedness we're not putting our hope into a extended time period as so many preach we're putting our hope in the absolute judgment of God destroying this world utterly utterly destroying this world do you know that that verse that I pointed out earlier that's pretty good where was that at right there every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways shall be made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God so this directly there uh, it's in Isaiah okay so all right, forgive me for not pointing that out but um Oh, wait a second, right there. Is that the same thing? That no, doesn't matter. I'm just going to let that go. Okay. Every and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, everybody's going to see. And so the movie left behind that you so desperately try to fit your doctrine into, it's not true. It's not true at all not true at all. Right, so they lied. They lie. Hollywood lies. Can you imagine that? I probably am just rocking your world right now, but it's true. That those people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ in Hollywood, they lie about Jesus Christ. It's offensive. I get it. I agree. It's offensive, but they do. Now, it's real simple. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world, at the end of this world as we know it. And in Second Peter chapter three, um, let me read this for you. The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, remembrance, remembrance. That ye, meet, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Now, you remember, Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of our uh, and, the, and so shall it be in the let's see, days of the Son of Man, which is Jesus, okay? Alright, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. And then the flood waters came and, and wiped them all out. That's the way it's going to be when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Alright, instead of water it's going to be fire now imagine what it was like okay 
when God destroyed the world by water. Those that he saved were in the ark. Those that were not in the ark, they didn't get a second chance. They didn't get a bonus thousand years. They were absolutely mortified. They were mourning. They were suffering. They were in agony. And <laughs> what's the Bible say? What does the Bible say? will happen when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven all the tribes of the earth mourn why well because they know it's the end of the world just like it was in the days of Noah when the waters came so also when Jesus comes people are going to be freaking out they were freaking out in the days of Noah. They're going to be freaking out when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. They're going to know it's the end of the world. Whether you're smart enough to figure it out or not, I don't know. But they're going to know it. You're going to know it. When There's not going to be any doubt about it. When Jesus comes, it's the end of the world. All your games that you're playing now, the game's going to be over. All right? There is no thousand-year bonus there is no antichrist setting up his kingdom and whatever imagine his the, the antichrist has already set up his kingdom and you missed it you're missing it fella you're just blind and not able to see it it's already happening it's happening right now you're missing it and you should have saw it and so all these games that you're playing coming to an end and when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven men's hearts will be failing them for fear that people are gonna be having heart attacks so this is because they know it's the end of the world there's no extended time period no dispensation if you will I mean come on man your games that you're playing now they're gonna be exposed you're gonna be exposed for teaching lies upon lies and deceiving people you're gonna be held to account now in Revelation chapter 1 I mean this it's all over the Bible it really is man when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven all kindreds of the earth shall well yeah, people are going to be having heart attacks, mourning, wailing. People are going to be suffering because they know it's the end. That's it. Game's over. All right. So the, all your games that you're playing now, they're coming to an end. All, right, you, all your little f silly fantasies of being, you know, Mister macho or whatever mr intellectual mr you know fancy words right? mr fancy pants it cleansed it it cleansed it it cleansed it it purged it fire yeah, fire the fire the fire is going to cleanse the world it's going to clean it it's going to make it nice and spiffy no it's going to utterly destroy this world that we're in just as we we can see this in many examples in our life where something is utterly destroyed and then something new is built up all right and that's exactly what's going to happen with this world it's going to be utterly destroyed and then something new is going to be built up all right let's continue here uh, but beloved be not ignorant of this one thing that one day with is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day now don't be ignorant of this this is talking about the Lord and he can see the beginning to the end all right he can see it as one day right he can see he can take one moment in time and look at it as though it was a thousand years long like having a magnifying glass he can look at every single little detail 
and th that's what this means all right this has nothing at all to do with any sort of biblical prophecy none whatsoever so again these games that you play with the words here you're gonna get exposed when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven your game is up all right. you're gonna have to be held accountable for the lies that you told the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us word not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance now I want to bring you back to Matthew 24 and keep in remembrance that he says except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived if any man say unto you lo here is Christ or there believe it not all right so there's we're in this world right now where there's great deception great deception great tribulation right now and if God let things play out there wouldn't be no flesh saved all right now keep that in mind okay because um, God is patient even though we are inching closer to a world where there would be nobody saved I don't know if inching is the right word. Maybe we're maybe we're in overdrive. It seems like every day, every single day, it just gets worse. It really does. But um, nevertheless, the Lord is going to come. Nevertheless, when the earth, when the the Lord cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? All right. Nevertheless, when the Lord comes, shall he find faith on the earth? Well, that's a heck of a question. Will anybody be saved? You know, they didn't even find ten righteous in Sodom and Gomorrah. There wasn't even ten righteous. And when Noah got saved, there was only eight souls saved. And so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, well, how, how could you even ask that question if everybody's jolly wally? Well, it's because there are deceivers, evil men and seducers, waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. How do you how do you identify those people? Well, you really can't, but you can you can see what kind of people they are when they don't believe the Bible that they hold in their hands, and they teach this idea of a dispensation after Jesus comes. You can see the signs, you can see the fruits of what they teach, and you could see the error, and it's clear obvious they don't see it because they're blind but you you're not blind you ought to be able to see it all right but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night it's pretty simple man pretty simple the day of the Lord is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we even read this oh, right there. behold he cometh with clouds Right? And every eye shall see him. Right? But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And the earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Now this is interesting because when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, 
in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise with a great noise and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet are you able to connect the dots here are you able to see that this is talking about the same thing this is not a second end of the world this is not a second coming of the Lord Jesus this is just the same thing man it's not complicated you see this all throughout the Bible the same thing the same thing is being taught all throughout the Bible go to Genesis 3 verse um, Genesis 3 verse 15 where it says where the Lord says to the serpent I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel that means the Lord is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent destroying all evil forever and ever all right until I make thine enemies thy footstool right Psalm 110 till I make thine enemies thy footstool and of course uh, 1 Corinthians 15 he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet and this is the same thing when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven right and the angels shall gather together his elect that means we're lifted up in the air to meet the Lord just as we read in 1 Thessalonians 4 and just as we read here we are changed in a moment in time at the last trump and we are raised incorruptible all right same thing when this happens the great day of the Lord this is when the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up just as we read in first that are uh, first uh, John chapter 2 for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world passes away in the lust thereof the world passes away in the lust thereof the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness so it should be obvious when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world the end of this world it's the end of this world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's the end of the world and so let me real, real quickly go back to Revelation 20 and the dragon or I'm sorry the you know the dragon the old serpent the devil Satan is bound alright that means he was loose before and so in the Old Testament Satan had uh, the freedom to uh, deceive the nations outside of the nation of Israel and then here comes Jesus and he makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him so Satan is bound until Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven which is at the end of the world which is at the end of the thousand years and so when this happens Satan is gathering together his 
people, the unsaved, right? And so when he gathers them, he gathers them at our feet. When it says they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about, where are we when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven? Where are we? Well, I showed you that we are gathered together. The angels gather us together to meet the Lord in the air. First Thessalonians chapter 4. First the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Alright, so we are up in the air, and our enemy is down on our feet, just like we read in Genesis 3, verse 15. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Psalm 110, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 15, he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. And then, then, you know, then they are, you know, fire comes down from God and out of heaven and devours them. We're not going to be on earth when that happens. We're going to be up in the air with the Lord when that happens. Fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. All right, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Again, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. At the end of the world, we are lifted up. There should be no doubt about it. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. In Revelation 20, we got a parallel right here in verse 9. At the end of the thousand years, fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. you got to be out of your cotton-picking mind to think this is a second end of the world. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? You're teaching this is one event and then this is another event? Now, that ain't right, man. There's something wrong with your heart. And so you say this, is a, this isn't a salvation issue? I, I don't know. You know. What kind of world are you preaching? A dispensation? Are you desperately holding on to an idea that you're going to be transformed into your glorified bodies? sticking your finger and other body parts at people that aren't saved is that what you're putting your hope into because that's not the same that's not the same so is this a salvation issue I, I, I can't help but think it is I feel like I would be lying if I said it's not a salvation issue you, you, are you putting your hope into this idea that you're gonna transform into a into Bugs Bunny because that's not the same. That's not the same at all. So is it a is it a is it a salvation issue? I, I can I can't help but think it is, man. I really I really I really believe that because what are you putting your hope into? I I'm looking forward to this world coming to an end and seeing the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And to see all the evil and wickedness of this world coming to an end. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be hard on the wicked ones. It's going to be hard on everybody, right? But for those of us that are saved, it's going to be more glorious. And it's going to be justice. And there's one way to look at this. Let's say that uh, somebody murders your child all right and you want justice you love your child you want justice for your child and so uh, the murderer he gets arrested and um, he gets he goes to you know goes to court gets judged and the judgment is the death penalty and now here comes the death penalty and 
he's in the electric chair or whatever, and he dies. That's justice. That's justice, and there's a great amount of relief in that moment. When that moment happens, there's satisfaction, the satisfaction of justice being done. And you think of all the pain and suffering that you go through in your life right now. Well, there's satisfaction coming. There's going to be justice coming. And that justice is going to be executed on the day of the Lord. That's what we're putting our hope into. We want justice. We want justice. And you think about, what was that in, in Luke 18? And they cry out day and night. See, are you one of those that are crying out day and night? We want God to avenge us. We want justice. And that day is coming. That day is coming when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It's the end of the world. It's justice. It's time for justice. And Jesus will execute justice upon the earth. And just as it was done in the days of Noah by water, this time it's going to be done by fire. And the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. This world is going to be destroyed by fire. Fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. Jesus is in the clouds of heaven. He sits on the great white throne executing judgment upon all the ungodly. Jesus from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. Right, The heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. This is the great day of the Lord. And what happens after this? What happens after this? Right? What happens after this? In Revelation 21, Behold, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Second Peter chapter 3, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Could it get any more easier to understand? Could I put it in a more simple sort of way? Is there an easier way to say it that when Jesus comes it's the end of the world? Will you still not understand? Because I'm telling you, you maybe you get it. You think it's easy. It's simple. And it, and it is. But 99% of all the preachers all the pastors, all the doctors, all the reverends, all the scholars, and all the experts, 99.9% .9 of them teach this idea that is contrary to when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. They teach something else. And so is that a salvation issue? Yeah, I think it is, man. Because it all comes down to what are you putting your hope into? Just be honest. What are you putting your hope into? For me, I'm putting my hope into everlasting life. A world without any sorrow. A world without any crying. A world without any tears. A world without any death. A world where there is no more pain. 